Thanks so much for joining us. Um, for those of you who um, didn't get on the Zoom, it just means it might be full. It'll flow over automatically into our YouTube streaming. Um, with us today is April Lim, very excited. She's a talent agent and founder of Global Artists Agency, which is based in Los Angeles. Um, they currently handle 195 clients, six agents are there. And uh, telling you a little bit about April Lim, who I've known for a very long time, after graduating USC, having majored in finance and marketing, April started out in the mailroom of William Morris back in 1994, then moved up to an assistant agent before transferring to United Talent Agency, UTA, as an assistant. Um, I'm sure she's had some uh, dealings and challenges of being a woman and an agent, a woman agent in, and being Asian in Hollywood. So I'd like to welcome April Lim. Hi, April. Hi. You know what's really great is that you and I are both in Los Angeles in separate places, <laughs> uh, streaming to people in Canada who are right. listening to this. Technology, um, excellent. That's the new way now, technology, right? That's the new way, absolutely. So I want to I want to take back. I mean, I know your story, but other people don't, and I love that. Um, let's go back to you're in USC, and mm -hmm. you've done finance and marketing. What was going in your mind? I'm trying to get that leap to I'm going to become an agent. What happened? Well, so I, so I love the business school um, and I love business, but all of my friends were in the film school at USC because I got put on, I was like one of the few non film people put in this dorm, dorm uh, room that had all of the film students. So there's all these like artists and, you know, they'd shoot until, you know, four in the morning and, and, um, with their super eights back then, <laughs> um, doing their projects and, and writing it was very creative and very artistic, but I was a business major. So those guys became my friends. And so I wanted to figure out a way that I could combine the artistic um, part of what they do with what I do. And um, eventually uh, I realized that I wanted to become an agent because I wanted to represent artists and work with them and help develop them and fight for them and um, and all that good stuff. So uh, my senior year, I snuck into uh, a lecture that an agent from ICM was giving. And uh, after afterwards, I just started asking him a thousand questions and he helped break down how you apply to the agencies and um, and uh, uh, I started from there and I applied to all the major agencies um, and went through the whole process uh, of, of interviews and um, eventually after being very, very super aggressive, <laughs> um, I, I was able to um, enter the William Morris training program. Now, now for those who are back in, and I know the system's probably gonna be different in Canada, but there are a lot of people listening who really wanna become agents as well. So just mm -hmm. take us through that process of, I mean, um, do William Morris and, and CAA, the larger, do they have a place that you actually go and submit to yes. try and get in? Yes, there's so, so there is a training program that is a formal training program that is different than their regular assistant program, mm -hmm. uh, but, and, but even if you're, even if you do the assistant program, it's still a great introduction um, to the talent world and to the business, frankly. You learn a lot on those desks. It's, it's they're tough. Um, and I don't think that much has changed since I was there, uh, but you, you definitely have to work under somebody and that's how you learn, learn learning on the job. Yeah, but you started, and I believe everyone started, and I don't know if it's the same now, in the mail room. Literally, yeah. Back then, and that, that was when it was actually William Morris, so it wasn't it wasn't WME. Um, and you started in the mailroom. I remember my first day I started, I had my business suit on and high heels. And I after that day, I was like, okay, rookie mistake, no high heels, because <laughs> you had you have you're pushing a mail cart around and you're delivering the mail. But that way, it, it kind of helps you from the ground up see what the what the um, company is like and you learn the names you learn where people's offices are you start to you know build a rapport with the other people that are in the mailroom and you see how the you start to see how the business works on a very very <laughs> entry level right right but but this is what people don't understand how long do people normally stay in that mailroom 
I mean, I don't know what it is now, but back then it was probably a good, you know, a good year, six months to a year. Um, you know, maybe it would be sooner than that, that you would uh, start to float and go on a desk um, and uh, become, you know, start to train to become someone's assistant. No, that's great. Cause I think some people think, oh, you know, I want to become an agent. I do something for a couple of weeks and then I'll beat this. And yeah, this. no, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a few years process um, of working and, and it's, and there's a reason for it. It's, it's because you do really have to learn. It's a, it's almost a different language. Um, and you want to learn who the buyers are, who the clients are, you know, um, how to actually do the job, even though some of the, the tasks you're doing are very menial um, you, you, that's how you learn. Uh, and it's actually very good skill sets, uh, for, even if you don't want to be an agent, if you want to be, um, at some other part of the business and, you know, on the executive side. Right. You're making all the contacts, you're building the relationships already. Yes. Okay. So must've been an exciting, now when I met you, you were still, I, you were in the mailroom. Yeah. You had not yet made you it. Were one of the, you were one of the first people I've met, you know, in, in the, in the business. And, um, yeah, so, so, I got out of the mailroom very quickly, actually, and then because I, I, you know, you start hearing about whose desk is open, and and um, I went to go work for uh, one of the partners there, and you know, got thrown right into it. <laughs> it was a different time then too, so um, those guys were very swimming with sharks ish. Yeah, you know what I was going to reference. By the way, I have that as a question. For yes. people who might not know that, I've actually put it in one of my questions. It should, but, it, it's absolutely a movie uh, that you should watch. Yeah, the old young old. ones, uh, yeah. uh, one of the one of the that and the player. You know, they're all they're all um, old movies and they're very like set in that era. Yeah. But but that is really what it was like. And I don't think I, I think some stuff has changed, but I don't think a lot's changed. <laughs> no, it's still it's really tough. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite part was, I mean, you used to call me at sometimes at, at like the middle of the night and you're like, I'm at the office. I <laughs> yeah. haven't slept. You know, it's yeah, like, then we were, <coughs> we would be at the office like till midnight. Yeah. That's a normal. <coughs> yeah. That's your work day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you're, you're on a desk, you're on an assistant desk. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand what that feels like. What are you doing? So you are you are literally an assistant, and you know taking care of everything from you know you know returning people's phone calls, uh, you know doing the call logs for your boss, um, giving them notes, telling them what they're calling the person about, taking notes, making sure you're aware of what's happening so you can follow up um, on the on your boss's um, uh, calls, and you know just depending on who you work for and what, probably what agency that you're at. Um, you know, it could, it could be, um, you know, personal things that you're doing for them. Who knows? Like anything and everything. And well, I was just going to say that if they're like, can you get my car for me? Can you pick up my, <laughs> you know, I think, yeah. I think there are also personal things that happen within that. Yeah. I, and again, times are starting to slowly change, but I don't think, I don't think that it's that much different than when I was there. <laughs> I know people aren't going to give that up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So assistant slash slave is, <laughs> is a better job. Yeah. Um, now, uh, when you first get in in the morning, I'm assuming you get in before the agent gets in. Yeah. Uh-huh. You get in before the agent gets there, um, you know, unless they're there like absurdly early, uh, which is, which some, some are early risers. Uh, uh, but, but generally speaking, the assistant there is earlier than the agent gets, you know, their phone sheet ready, gets ready for the day. Um, and, you know, is a step ahead basically and anticipates uh, what, what needs to happen. So if, there, if, if a client had gone in um, on an audition or, or something like that, you know, you have to have that ready to go and follow up and, and you know, have your boss follow up on it, all, all of that good stuff. Now, how did you know, you brought up something just now that, that it made me think of people might not know this. How did you know where you wanted to streamline? Because there's a difference between agents who handle actors Agents who hire, who handle screenwriters, you know, the different aspects of agents. Tell us a little bit about those different ones and how you chose what you chose. Well, actually, originally, uh, I thought it was going to be a literary agent um, and, you know, work with writers and directors um, when I first started. But uh, the, the, one of the desks that I was on, surprisingly, I, he also had uh, um, actors. So 
I started just really connecting with the actors and, you know, you always hear these stories, oh, they're so, they're this, they're, they're difficult. But, you know, for me, I was pretty straightforward and I would just like nicely be straightforward and I would tell them their feedback or I would follow up for, with stuff on them that I didn't find unreasonable at all. Um, you know, everybody has their moments, but, um, but I understood where they were coming from. So, you know, I just really connected with a lot of the actors and uh, um, really got along with the actors. And that's where I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what that is, you know? And, and that's then, then I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I, I, I really enjoy the writer and director side, but I just really connected um, on that side of, with, with actors more so. Now to give us a sense, we're talking about the 90s. Were there any other either black or indigenous, other Asian, South Asian, How about Asian like and training female, there? And female, by the way. Oh, and female. Let's not forget that. Were there any women even there? <laughs> um, I was and I was the only female in my mailroom um, at the time, you know, and uh, no. The answer is no. And there, maybe there was one, there were, there were a, a, a couple of people, maybe, um, um, in my mail, I'm trying to, trying to think back, but very, 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 very few, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was, it was not, it, and, and, you know, obviously now they're trying to change things, and I think it's good that they're, they're trying to change things, but I just hope it's not just in the moment. <laughs> Uh, yeah it's the, same, it's the same guys that are still running it that from when I was there um so I I you know hopefully hopefully stuff will, will eventually change but it's a yeah. long it's a, it's definitely a long road to go and um you know I think that a lot of those places um don't have executives there that are of color do you know so so that's also a big problem yeah now you eventually left from William Morris. You went over to UTA. Talk a little bit about what what that decision, how that came about. Um, well, uh, with William Morris, um, I was told that that um, they did not want me in the training program there anymore, and that um, maybe agenting wasn't for me. And um, you know, I, I was very very shocked and very surprised that my uh, boss had told me that. And uh, he basically thought he was doing me a favor by telling me, you know, look who's running this company. Those guys will never promote you. (laughs) So I'm like, wow, that means, well, I need to be an agent even more then. So I can change, so I can just exist so that someone like you doesn't think that way. Do you know, like it's uh, to replace someone who thinks like that? Because whether that's the, truth or not or whatever it's like it's not okay to say that and you know I um I just have to do it now I have to have I really have to have have my point of view heard yeah and you prove them wrong you know what I I have one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you in in this and I could have chosen anyone I wanted it to be you is because I've watched your steps and I've watched how hard and tenacious you have never given up and I can tell you I don't even know if you sensed it but the whole time you were assisting in the whole, uh, and even in the mailroom, I felt they were, they were trying to get you to quit because they, yeah. they, put you through, yeah. they put you through crap that I've never heard anyone else go through. And yeah. when you would not quit, that's when they had to say that. Yes. Yeah. And well, they did because I, um, I, I am a hard work. Like you said, like, I'm like, well, of course, if you just work hard, and I'm just as smart as these guys. Like, why? Why wouldn't uh, I'm, I'm going to be loyal? I'm going to go for it. Why wouldn't they? But yeah. um, I did not fit their mold. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And um, and then you know, eventually I went to UTA, and um, and uh, although it was a lot younger there for sure, um, you know, it it because it was a newer company, um, it it was a lot more of the same. Right. So, so um, eventually, so, so, but, but again, I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, work at these big companies, learn the skill sets. And eventually, you know, I wanted to start my own agency. Um, that was always kind of the plan um, right. with other people that were like-minded in terms of um, back then it was more about the artist and fighting for the artist. Uh, um, and, and that was, that was kind of my feel. Cause I was like, Oh, not everybody that's an agent is here to fight for artists. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, 
it was it's 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 been an interesting journey and when i did start this now it's it's i you know started it in 2004 right after uta you know as an agent there for, for quite a while um i wanted to again it's it, it it's all about the artist and i wanted to find people that um were real artists that we connect with that that um that we can sign that, uh, you know, UTA is not saying, or, or whoever, the bigger agencies are saying, you can't sign this person or that person. So it's just who, who we, we connected with. And a lot of us um, are from the bigger agencies too. So, so um, we didn't want to sign, have like a thousand clients. We want to have a small list and um, really fight for our clients. And, right. and um, you know, and I guess because um, of the nature of, of us here, uh, who we connect with just organically is are, are a lot of diverse actors mm -hmm. and artists um, and uh, and we were doing it when it wasn't easy <laughs> right we were doing and it's it not when, even easy now but it no, wasn't but easy at all way in the beginning like like back then it really wasn't easy yeah. um, and but we didn't think that way we just thought okay who's good who do we see that has it we've all because we, all of us have worked with um, really great talent, seeing them, have them be broken out um, and uh, uh, in the mainstream world, you know? And so we're like, well, well we, that can be anybody. Why not? <laughs> Why not? So, so um, it's been, an, it's, it's been interesting um, because of course the, the marketplace changed um, and there's a lot more opportunity. But like I said, I think the biggest thing that I think has to happen too is that um, there has to be on the writer side, the producer side, and the executive side, there has to be more diversity. Yeah. It, it, it just has to happen because or else or else it's not genuine and, and a lot of what's happening is a little disingenuous, um, mm -hmm. you know, and again, I'm glad that it's happening, but for it to happen in a way that is sustainable, is a way in a way that is real, um, um, you know, there just has to be more people on that side of it. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I love it. You know, when, I, when I'm up in Toronto, people think I'm a little too cynical and skeptical, but maybe it's just the way we're built in Los Angeles. I don't know, but hearing you makes me, yeah. We, people are saying all kinds of things. I don't know if it'll mean anything, <laughs> honestly, in the long run. Uh, I get nervous when they try to do a quick fix on anything, um, but a quick fix, fix lasts, you know, for a minute. Yeah. but it's not real fundamental long lasting change and i don't think i don't feel i don't i'm not and i'm not getting a sense that that's what people really want like the people at the top i don't know yeah. if they really want that well look uh, for for myself i can speak from my own experience of of representation okay that this is my area of expertise that that i know and i'm on the ground i'm like i'm in it and the stuff that that's the this conversations that i actually have in real time are, um, well, why are you, uh, why are you cutting my client, my diverse client on the show? Um, yeah. Because, well, we, we just couldn't figure out a storyline for them. I said, well, what do you mean you can't figure out a storyline? You know, they, they're like, they actually look like they're a New York cop. <laughs> they, like, like, what are you talking about? And, and you know they'll say stuff like, "Well, the the writers just couldn't fit the executive producer, the producers and the writers couldn't figure." I go, "Let me ask you a question." I said, "Do you have any writers of color on your writing staff?" This was just this was like eight months ago, maybe. Yeah. Like, to, yeah, we don't have to go back in history too far. No, <laughs> this was very very recent, and yeah. you know, and I and I knew I was being I knew it was a very edgy a very edgy question for them, um, and you know they they. They said, "Well, that doesn't have it. That's that doesn't that doesn't have anything to do with it." I go, it "Absolutely does." I go, "Because I'm telling you, that writer would have made it their business to figure out his storyline." Absolutely. I said, "So, so," and I said, "I want you," and I said, "I want you to run that up the flagpole," and I'd like you to say that to everyone. And then I got, of course, I got some call, calls back from some of the executives that I know, but and I said the same thing, and they're telling me, "No, that has nothing to do with it." No, it, we promise it. I said, well, I, I think you guys, and then by the end of the conversation, at least they said, you're right, we have to do better. Because right. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't let it go. Because I've been doing this for so long that I know when it's something that's very straightforward and it's a plot point and all that stuff. And I know when, if you just did a little bit, put a little bit of elbow grease in, you could have made it work very easily. Yeah. 
you I know? think that's, that is a big difference though between a really good agent and an agent that's not as good because an agent that's not as good is more scared. They don't want to ruffle. They don't want to cause any waves. They think it might affect their agency or their other clients, but you don't have to be like mean and aggressive, but you do uh-huh. have to stand your ground yeah. and explain, you know, um, I, I think you're, you're smart for doing that. Well, and the, and the thing is, is that um, now you can't, you know, you could before like, I, but I've been doing that for like, the past couple decades oh, right <laughs> so so like I really like I like and I know the main I, I like I since I did come from those big agencies I um I know the business side backwards and forwards and I have relationships with 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 a lot of people we we all came up in the business together and you know um it's it's just interesting there the conversations are are very interesting now and and, and by the way it's also on the deal making part of it the thing that I find very interesting is now that they made it um, a law, it's a labor law in terms of the, um, in terms of um, quotes, do you know, right. they are not allowed to, they're not allowed to ask for a client's quote anymore. Oh, because so, they used to all the time. Uh, yeah. So that's what they base their offer offer to you on, not based on their work or any of that, that kind of stuff. So it was like, what's interesting is that I have noticed that we were able to make huge, huge jumps in our clients' quotes and money. Right. Or whatever. We don't, we don't, you don't, because you don't have to give the quotes. So it's, they have to look at the, the resume right. of where they probably should be. I hope so you understand. Very interesting. For Canadians listening, you're talking a foreign language right now okay. because <laughs> right. they are, we're supposed to be grateful in Canada for scale. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. We don't even know what, you know, that, that is your, that is almost your top point. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're trying to negotiate you lower than scale, but scale for sure. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's completely challenging. Now, now one of the, I'm getting a lot of these, these questions are starting to roll in now. And one of the ones, and I knew we would get this question. What do you look for? What is the advice for Canadians coming down? You have some Canadian clients. What should they be doing? Sure. Okay. First off, um, I have, I have lots of, I have lots of advice. Uh, for, so are you, are you, I think it's good for you guys to get representation there first and foremost, if you can. Right. So you um, said, so step one, that'd be a good point tip, get representation in Canada first. Yeah. Because a lot of us, all of us here down here, we work a lot and collaborate with a lot of the Canadian agents there. Right. So you'll have a Canadian agent and then you'll have an American agent. Yeah. And, um, uh, and you know, in terms of, um, um, and, and right now, because everybody's just self-taping, do you know, it's an even playing field in a crazy, strange way. If there's a way you can get your your visa, your work visa too, start looking into that and working on it. Save your money to hire a lawyer to do it. It's not cheap. But um, the problem is, is, if you don't have a, an O-1 visa to work in the U.S., you can't do the smaller stuff, which is the stuff that you'll probably get. So like guest stars, all that kind of stuff, you won't, it's harder to get, it's harder to get that logistically because with guest stars, you audition for the guest star and then it works the next week. To get a visa, the, the, the shortest amount of time, if you did it expedited is 15 days. So you won't get it in time. So say you book a great job, you might not be able to get, you're not, you won't be able to do it because you won't be able to get your visa in time. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, but but I think it works very quickly. I think some people don't understand. Um, a lot of times you audition and you're on set in five days, you know, from yeah. there. Yeah. And so there's also like you you can also if it's a film or a pilot, that's that gives a little bit more time. You have a little bit more time from when you audition to when it actually starts. Right. So so um but you so, need your but I think part of the the answer to is you have to have your work papers together because you can't even audition. You, you can't audition down here if you don't you can, have visas. And, you can audition. You just, but they'll. They, it depends on what it's for because you also don't want to upset the people because if you do book it and they're like, "What do you mean they don't have their papers?" Yeah, yeah. You know, so so that even it, changed a little because back when I used to audition more, <laughs> like audition, audition when I was younger, mm-hmm. um, you had to put your social security number on it because they had so many run-ins with right. booking Canadians and they didn't have the work visas that they were starting to get upset about that. 
and there well by the way there's it's still this it's still similar but um we all but we don't see since we don't have a lot of clients and we actually take the time to know our clients and all that stuff um we kind of know what we can have them tape for without pissing anybody off right so, so um you know because i i actually have we have uh canadian actors that we work with like i i work with um a young actress she's she's young i mean she's um 15 and so adorable <laughs> um, and, uh, and I have her tape for stuff and I let them know, they know, they know she's Canadian. They know she's up there. Um, they still allow her to tape because, you know, they, um, they're open to her and they're open to, um, if there's enough time, they'll tell me, they'll say, oh, there's not enough time. Just forget it. Don't, don't, don't do it. Right, right, right. Um, do you handle, uh, not you yourself, but does the agency handle any literary? Do you have that part of it? You know what it is? It, we, we do it based on our acting clients. So right. if our acting client has a script that, that they've written, yeah, um, then we will take it on. But in terms of um, a full-blown literary side, we that that just focuses on that. We don't. So you may or may not be able to answer this one, but just from your expertise, um, people in Canada are always um, frustrated that they they need to attach. A lot of times they have to attach talent that's really well known, which ends up being Americans. Mm -hmm. um, and when they contact those agents with script, they're like, oh, come back to us, you know, when it's fully funded. But the way it works in Canada is a lot of the funding is contingent on who you attach because we, uh, many people get uh, a big portion of their funding through telefilm or CMF or through a government um, arm here. Mm -hmm. So how do we get around that? We need to attach the talent to activate the funding <laughs> to pay the talent. Now are these are these projects that are primarily that you want to do in Canada? Yeah, they would shoot in Canada, but they would uh, they would want to attach a you know a bigger name to to activate that funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's the same it's a similar thing down here though too. Do you know? Um, I think that it depends on the material um, as well because if it's something that's a um, a concept that's like yes we want that right now then of course you'll, you'll be able to, to um, attach people. But a good way to do it too is, like I said, it just depends on the material, like the subject matter. Because yeah. if you find the right producer uh, down here that is um, well-known and you know does well with that, that particular genre, yeah. uh, then they can help put it together too. Yeah. I think I think it's because what you're saying, what you're saying makes sense on paper, but we have such a difficult system up there. Um, you might not be able to attach an American producer, for instance, to activate the funding because the funding is really to help Canadian talent. Yeah. Um, it's kind of strange. The funding is to help Canadian talent, but you have to attach someone with a well-known name that is usually not a Canadian person unless they already live in the States right. and they have a bit of a name. So there's kind of a catch-22 that goes on there that we're mm -hmm. all trying to fix. Everyone's right. always talking about fixing it. Right. <laughs> fix. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll I can talk to you more about it off, offline too because I don't I have to I need to know more about it um, um, to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of these questions I do want to answer some of the questions that are coming up here, but some of the questions I don't understand. <laughs> so I don't. So please resend your question with more clarity. Um, let, let's go back to the clients uh, that you do have and talk a little bit about that relationship. You know what I. So many actors have different expectations of their agents. Um, I personally don't need to talk to them at all. <laughs> I would like, I just need you to call me when you have something for me and that's all. But there are people who are like, I didn't talk to my agent today. I didn't talk this week. And I feel like, wow, am I doing something wrong? Like, I'm like, why do we need to talk to them at all? <laughs> well, I, you know, it all, it kind of all just depends because everybody's personality is so different, you know? So, yeah. um, but generally speaking, if you want someone that you're talking to every day and you don't have business at hand, you, that's what a manager does here yeah. in LA. So, so if, if, if it's somebody that needs to be talking to someone all the time, then, then that's more of a manager relationship than an agency relationship. I'm very, we're very managerial with our clients since we don't have a million clients, we can do that. If you're talking about somewhere you know, at the big, at the big places, you will not talk to your agent every day. Um, and, uh, they won't, that's just, it's just not, they have a gajillion clients, each one of them that are, you know, it's just not going to happen. Um, and then it's like, if they're on the phone with you and all their clients all day long, then when are they pitching you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you now, know, the agents are the ones that, you know, we're on the phone trying to pitch, trying to sell, 
email, call, text, at every, any which way possible. Yeah, um, you're busy. <laughs> yeah, but, but for but I do have a really you know a close relationship with my clients, and the reason is it, it you know I, I do have more time to do that because um, we are more hands on, but not on and and especially if we're in the middle of um, a deal or projects or there's a lot of momentum, then I'll, then you talk because you have something to talk about concrete, you know. Right. And, um, um, you know, some of my uh, developmental clients too. If if I'm I'm like oh I, I I saw your self tape. This is what you need to do. You know that that kind of a thing. Um, or you need to work with this person, and then and then you know get get someone going for a while um, until they're on the right track. Uh, and then and that's that's when we talk the most. Now talk a little bit about the difference between a manager and an agent, and who should be considering getting both, or if you just get one, which one should you get? Like. Um, for people who might not know. Sure. Okay. Well, okay. So if you want to know the technical difference between a manager and an agent in, in California, you, first of all, you have to, you have to be um, part of either the ATA or, um, you know, as, a, as a talent agent, as an agency, you have to have your bond. It's very, it's much more formal. Um, you, there's a labor commissioner that you have to be, have to have a talent agency license um, mm -hmm. under and you're regulated. By the state of California, so so you can't just be like you can't just open up shop and say hey I'm I'm a talent agent. There's a process that you have to go go through, right. and um and uh, um and agents are allowed to procure auditions are able to procure are able to negotiate deals on behalf of their clients. That those are the biggest differences between the manager and the agent technically. So the the um, manager is not supposed to um, uh, negotiate a deal. That's actually against the the rules. So um, the lawyer can a lawyer can negotiate the deals. Um, you know, and and then there's a gray area of whether managers can get you auditions. Um, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, managers are are helpful with that, but they're not really supposed to. But that a lot of people do. They they do, um, and so. When it gets when your career starts to take off and you're super busy and say you book a show and you have so many things coming at you, um, like your fittings, your your this, and you need someone to help you. That's that's um, more than just an assistant. You need someone who is saying, okay, let's um, here's here's what you need to do today. Um, we're gonna say no to this, and this is why. We're gonna say yes to do this, and this is why. That's what a manager does um, to help maneuver and guide you, so that you don't have to think about it really, so yeah. that you, you know, so that you can just focus on the work and focus on the artistic part of it. And um, and I always think of managers really are strategizing the longevity of your career, and you know what kind of decisions, where you see what you want to do, what you know. I think it's those kind of discussions that your agent doesn't necessarily have time to be talking about that. And that, and yeah, the agent is out there hustling for you, uh, you know, getting you auditions, talking to, pushing once, once you get a bite, you know, pushing um, on all levels, you know, with talking to the producer, talking to the casting directors, to the network or studio, um, you know, to their friend who knows somebody who knows any of that kind of stuff, you know, and, and actually just getting you the audition um, and, and uh, um, getting you to that next level. And there is, strategy, like I said, we're very managerial, but we love working with managers too, when they're good. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, <laughs> I love how you caveat that. What's, what's working with a bad manager look like? Well, because sometimes, uh, um, it, sometimes there are, you know, man, there are managers that um, it's not the right fit anymore for somebody at a certain time where it starts to, um, their advice actually starts to detriment to the other. Right. And um, it's not helpful. It's not even like a bait. It's, you're not even like just going along. And it's fine. It's actually harmful. And that's when I'm like, well, maybe this is, let's reassess the relationship. Yeah. Um, so, so um, you know, and, and I think, and there's different kinds of managers. It's, it's, a, it's really, you know, as you go along, you kind of know what works for you and what doesn't work for you as an actor. Because what you need, like in the beginning, maybe there's, an, there's a manager that's, that has a crazy personality that's really abrasive but is able to get you in rooms or something you right. know eventually yeah maybe they get you into all the wrong rooms and then you're like, okay now i can't that's not for me like i need to you know so it just depends and 
it, as you go along. Um, and then you kind of know it as, as you, once you start um, going, you know, booking more things and, and working more and all that stuff. Um, um, you know, it's a, it's a, you don't know until you're in the relationship with though, a lot of the time. That is what the feeling is like. You're, it's like you're in a relationship. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I do. You know, this this brings up the next point. I do tell talent, interview your agent. Ask questions. Like, don't, you're not just there in the hopes that they take you and that's it. It may not be a good fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. t t tell me a little about how you choose people. Like, if people are interested in getting into your agency, what is the process? You may just be completely closed. You may, only managers could submit somebody. Like, how how would it work? Um, yeah, a lot of times it really is through relationships, um, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise it would just be, we, you know, you just be bombarded, um, by, and you don't know where it's coming from because you have no reference. So, um, so, you know, that can be from other actors. It could be from, um, you know, producers or, or, or people that are executives on the casting side. It could be, um, from, and, and a lot of the time it's from managers. Uh, so, um, um, and then there's also the, the, these, um, the schools and everything they do that, that they put out every year, you know, they have the work, the, um, the, uh, casting workshops or whatever. Right. But I think that, um, uh, but mo mo primarily I would say for managers, other managers that we, we, that we know and, um, and, uh, what we look for, I think every agent is different because everybody has a different personality of what they connect with. Right. Do you know, so, so um, for me, I always say it just depends on if I think I can do something for someone like, and I just know it because I've been doing this for so long where they're, they're ready. Oh, okay. That person's ready. Um, they have some good credits. Like I can, I can do something with that. Like, oh yeah. And I, like, I like that, you know, we, for, for me now too, by the way, <laughs> I want to be able to get along and like the person and vice versa. Um, Isn't that, I love that you said that. That yeah. is so key. And I think that happens as you get old, like older. I mean, you're way younger than me, but as we mature, it's like, you can't lure me into any job. If I have to spend a moment with somebody I do not want to be with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's too hard because, because it, because I'm like, oh, okay. We're having a lot of success and this is fantastic. And we get along the same amount of success, you know? So, so it's just, yeah. it's, um, it's, it's good that way. I mean, look, there's a time and place where, every, like I said, everybody has their moments where, you know, there might be something that's difficult for someone and then you work it out, you work it through with them. But because I know my clients so well, I, if, if I ever hear anything like, oh, it was like this or like that, I know exactly, I'm like, no, that's not true. Or let me, no, well, you're just misunderstanding. Let me work it out. Let me fix, right. fix it. Because there, because um, there's definitely moments in that because you want to be able to trust um, who you are working with. Yeah. Um, you know, you have, you have clients that are older. <laughs> I've got some questions from clearly it's from people that are older, but would you bring on a new client that's older? I think some actors want to know those kind of things. I, I mean, it, it just depends. It, honestly, it depends. Um, I can imagine if they already were, you know, quite successful in what they were doing, but yeah. I mean, it's horrible to say, but I can't see the lucrative side of of starting with someone who's much older when you don't have the years that you need to build them. Yeah. Well, it just look, the it depends. It, it, if it depends on how trained someone is. If somebody just is like wakes up one day and says, "I want to be an actor," <laughs> doesn't take it seriously or like thinks that they already can do it, that is not, you know, that's not a good use of time for any for at, either, at, at any either party. At any no. age. Exactly. So, you know, you, you can never say never. I don't know. You know, it depends if somebody is super trained and they're brilliant and, you know, they, they have ability and talent and all that kind of stuff. And like, they're willing to kind of put it all out there and, and, and put their, put, put what, you know, give what it takes, like, you know, never say never. I don't know, you know, yeah. um, but I do think that um, like how you and I are both mature -er and no, are, yeah I am mature -er -er, and then maybe and, and, you know, mature <laughs> like you, the stuff that you have to put up with coming up in the business is is difficult so if, if you have the patience and you're willing to 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 do it great but if if it if you're only half if you if you're just halfway in no I mean like again that's that's for for any any person 
you know, you have to kind of really want to be, because I, I won't work with anybody that's not full on wanting to do this and willing to give it their all because we're giving it our all we're fighting. We fight for our clients so hard. So it's like when, when someone's like, Oh, I just don't want to, you know, Oh, I didn't make it. Oh, I didn't, I, I wasn't prepared because blah, 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 you know, whatever. And they come up with all these excuses and yeah, yeah. why are we, why are we doing this together? <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. Do you encourage um, two, two uh, good questions? I can't believe where the time has gone already, by the way. It's just like flying by and a lot of questions are coming in. And I am I am trying to listen to you, April, and I'm trying to read the questions. <laughs> I'm trying to do a lot here. You're so, multitasking. Yeah. In terms of uh, someone's asking a lot about a visa, about an O-1 visa. And I don't know if you know that much about the visas because I don't even know anymore. And I used to back in the day when I used to, to have them, but are there visas that make it easier for people or, you know, anything if you don't know? Just a no one visa. No, the, you either get a, you, the, you, your alternatives. There's a one year O-1 visa, a three year O-1 visa. I highly recommend to get the three year one if you're going to yeah, get it. Given, yeah. it, it, it. You have to gather all kinds of press material. You know, you have to get letters of recommendation. You have to get um, you know, like all immigration the, lawyer. Yeah. But, but the first thing, yeah, you have to pay and you have to get it done through, I highly recommend to suck it up and get it done through an immigration lawyer because you do not want to do it wrong because if you do it wrong and you come here and you oversee your visa or whatever, do anything wrong on it, you, you will not be able to come for like years. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had that, I had that happen before, um, uh, to a client, um, who not Canadian, who's um, a European. And um, he had hired a lawyer that I didn't know who this lawyer was, but had gotten the wrong advice, couldn't come back for seven years. I mean, he, he, he stayed here longer than the tourist visa or something. Right. And he left it, got in trouble. So I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> um, and I always tell that story as a cautionary tale for people to take it seriously. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot, quite a bit that you have to do to get your visa. And, um, you know, you can get, you, you know, you, you can also just get a green card, but that requires a big commitment. And I don't recommend that till you really know that this is what you want to do. And later on, because you, I think you have to spend like six months of the year in one place or something like that, but um, in each place or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you do. I, I can speak a little on that. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, I had those visas, they were called H1 back in the olden days. But then when I got my green card, yeah, you have to be tracking that. You have to spend six, six months and one day always in the U.S. Not all together, but within a, a 12-month period, it always has to add up to that. In fact, what I think is funny is once you get your American citizenship, you don't actually have to spend any time in America at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Always... right, yeah. And so, but, it's, but, but yeah, the, the goal is to, to you know, and, and you want to get your visa when you're ready kind of when you're ready to, to come. So what would be good is to build up your credits in Canada. You know, there's a lot of great, you know, crossover shows, all the, um, like a lot of those CW shows that shoot up there, do um, you know? Cause then people in America recognize what the shows are. Right. Um, and and uh, um, it helps your resume and it, and it's, um, you know, it takes, a, it takes a minute to get started in America, do you know? But yeah. if you have, but there's a lot of Canadians that have a lot of success here that are able to cross over, you know? Um, and, you know, you don't, if you have the means to do it overnight, great to come down and live here for a while and and um, and have representation and all that, but you have to line everything up carefully um, first, I would say. Now, I, this is what I never understand how American um, agents do it. Cause in Canada, we only have like a certain amount of casting directors. Here it's like hundreds of, ca hundreds of casting directors. Mm -hmm. How do you have those relationships? Like there, there's just so many of them. How does that, uh, well, you try not to have relationships well, with all of them. You I just, know. Well, I, you know what? It's like, again, they, they're the, a lot of them are the same casting directors or they were the associates or assistants of the other casting directors. So there's right. different generations of them all. And, and you just, if you've been around for a chunk of time, you just know them, yeah. do you know? Um, and you know, kind of who does what type of ca casting, who does what, you know what I mean? And, and, um, and you, you know, there's like, like with us, there are some of us who, um, at the agency um, that have strong relationships with some of them than others, do you know? And so we'll be like, okay, you're covering this project because <laughs> you know, you have a really good thing with her. I don't have a good thing with her anymore. We got in a fight over something such and such, whatever, you know? And so right. the person will cover it, do you know? 
And, um, and so, so, uh, uh, but yeah, you know, just when you're, when you've been doing this for a long time, you just know them all. Yeah. 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 Um, do you find that has casting changed? Do they still just ask, I'm looking for this kind of ethnicity, whatever, are they more open? Are you able to pitch people that are not I just, white? I do it all the time. I've been doing it. Yeah. I've n I'm keep doing it and I will continue doing it. I've never stopped. <laughs> Has it, has it worked? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm like, good. Uh, before, because before when it was really a different time, they, where they would say Caucasian, I'm like, well, why does that person have to, it, we always said, why does that have to part, person have to, can they be a different ethnicity? Because if, and we would always, this is what we always say, if they're not part of a family and it's not a plot point, why not? Do you know? And that's how we've all we we said that from the the beginning. Now it's 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 um different and it's opened up more, right. um, I think. But but um, sort of it's it's still very imperfect. But um but at least there's movement. Do you know? Yeah. And we'll keep fighting the fight. We'll keep we're gonna keep keep doing it. And you know, and the, and the thing is, is like well, I I keep saying I think that um we just like to represent people that are exceptional actors, whatever they are. And, yeah. um, and uh, um, that's what we'll continue to stick with, you know? Now, a lot of, a lot of emerging um, talent will do like an indie film, which gets into festivals. Mm -hmm. um, do you get to get, do you get out to these film festivals? Do you get to yeah. see any of these um, works? Does that sometimes, have you found talent that way? Uh, yeah, we, well, we've, um, I, uh, we go to Sundance every year. Um, I don't know about this coming year. Um, <laughs> right. And we've You're had- going and, virtually. <laughs> yeah, you? exactly. But we've had, and we, you know, we have had a lot of actor, of our actors in these, in these films. Mm -hmm. so, um, you don't know, sometimes you're like, oh, that one looks like it could be a film festival film. You don't know because, because, uh, you know, they shoot them and then they either don't see the light of day or they get picked up. Right. Um, by some of these, some of these, like I had a ton of people that were, um, going to be in South by Southwest, you know, their, their films or TV shows, all of that stuff. And then, and then at the last minute, you know, they canceled it this year because of COVID. Yeah. Um, so, so we do, we do go out, um, you know, based on, we had people that were, you know, their films were in um, competition, like in Sundance. And, um, but Park. those are the clients you already have. Have you ever gone thinking, oh, let me see if there's anyone here spectacular? Uh, abs absolutely. So, so when like, you know, you see your clients' films and you see the other actors in those films yeah. and, and you're familiar with them and then you meet them and you're like, oh yeah, for sure. You know, we definitely, definitely do that. Um, do you know, and, and um, uh, you know, you, when you watch it, you, you see who pops. Like even if yeah. the movie's just okay, you're like, oh, but that person is amazing. Do you know? I would say more than even down here in, in, in LA, in Canada, a lot of actors also become producers. They also become writers. They also become directors. It's so difficult to get work, especially if you're Black, Indigenous, or people of color, mm -hmm. that they have had to transition and create work for themselves. Um, I know it's rarer down here. So how do you get a chance? I'm trying to figure out how, because they may not make those festivals. So do you, is there, do you ever just, uh, do they send you a Vimeo link to look at their films? You have you ever had that? Uh, were people sending me their, the stuff their Vimeo that, links to, to see a movie that they may have produced themselves or created themselves and maybe it's seen a couple of smaller festivals in Canada but hasn't made it to the states yeah, I mean I think like like I said that's usually by referral or somebody that I know um, right. and it, or otherwise we can't if you, we can't just take unsolicited um, projects because it's just so much do you know yeah. like, like if I just get an email from somebody that I don't know or don't have any reference to just like that's a mass email from like a million. I, I, we, we don't generally tend to look at those to be honest. Right. And I understand that with like a script, you don't want that or just somebody, but these are probably movies that are finished that have screened at other festivals. So they might send them to you. I don't, you may not watch them, <laughs> but they might send them you a Vimeo link to say, if you have a chance to watch our movie at some point and maybe see talent that way. Probably. But you're right. We're always interested, but it has to, it, it does, the reason why, or else, like I said, it's going to be, you don't know where it's coming from. It could be from any, anywhere, or anyone, or who knows. Oh, what. I see. Just the fear yeah. of that. Just not you clicking on something that you don't even know what it is. Yeah. Be, yeah. yeah. And as long as it was, if, and when you have a point of reference, then you know, like, okay, like, yeah. 
take a look at this. No, I never thought about that. Yeah. It could be a virus to come and infect your whole, like you don't know really uh, mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. These are these are great questions. So we've been talking a lot about just America and Canada, but we actually have some people on here. Someone's from London. <laughs> like, um, you know, there's been a, a pretty a British invasion. We've got to talk about that a little bit uh, in yeah. LA. Well, it's, 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 it's hard. And I know in Europe and especially um, with, with in, in Britain, forget it's so it's so um, clicky there and so like yeah. you know like I just. You know, it's 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 hard there for actors. Period. I know already. Right. I am familiar. But, but do you get actors from there um, trying yeah. to get into your agency? Yeah. Absolutely. Um. And um. And we're open. Like I have, um. You know, I, we represent actors in um in Asia. We represent actors in uh in Australia. You know, so so it's we're we're open for sure. You know, you just made me think of something I was going to ask you earlier. Do you feel you got pigeonholed, like when you're working at another agency, that your job is to take care of Asian clients? You know, your job is to take care of. Well, well, first of all, it's like, it's 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 interesting because on the one hand, well, back then there weren't any. I like oh, right. Michelle Yeoh. I was on Michelle Yeoh's team a million years ago, and and like that was cool. But guess what? There was not there. It was back then there were no roles for her you yeah. know it was very difficult and and plus like a lot of the uh i say I could go in i could go into great detail but i won't um <laughs> you know, the, of the issues um but like i said i was i am definitely passionate there are a lot of people that are that are of that are diverse that are doing very well now but back then they wouldn't let me sign and they wouldn't oh, wow. they wouldn't let me sign specifically because of that because they said it was too difficult i'm like what look at what you're telling me that what are you talking about like so that's that's also a big reason why you know with, with this agency it's just a different because i am an owner and um i i see in the, charge i i see the world differently though i don't see it that way do you know right. like, why couldn't they be that why couldn't why not like what are you talking about do you know and then and then there's also other there's also a lot of other um, things I could go on and on about, but it's, I know we don't have a lot of time, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can go on about one of them. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think that, um, uh, you know, the other thing that I that I always say too is that, um, you know, there, because there's not a lot of, um, up until now, these roles, they're, they're like, well, I was, I was talking to a very high profile casting director about um, an actor of mine uh, and, she was complaining to me that that actor only had television credits because it was for a big, big feature film. And I said, well, how, I said, and, and the director and the producer wanted my client, mm -hmm. the studio, she was, she was not being supportive. And I said, I don't understand why I, I, I cause I thought, I thought she was going to be like, yeah, great. We're going to make it. And she was so resistant. And I was like, well, well, I don't understand what the problem is. She's like, well, he only has these TV credits. And I was like, well, those are pretty good TV credits. He <laughs> That's right. And she said, well, that, those aren't, yeah, but, but um, uh, those, those credits are, are um, I said, let me, let me just point something out to you. And this was a while, this was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, and she said, well, why, why are, uh, uh, um, she said, I, I said to her, well, let me ask you questions. When's the last time in one of your big feature films that you cast any of the first three leads with an Asian guy? Right. Can you, get, let, it doesn't exist, right? You didn't right. do it. So how can you expect him to have those credits? Yeah. It does not exist. Yeah. So, so you know, um, slowly, but it's, it's like Crazy Rich Asians was one of the first films where they had like a leading, an attractive, you know, leading guy, um, Asian male so it's yeah. like it's like you know when you don't when they're literally they won't cast it for all this time how how can it exist how can I have a body of of work for that you, yeah. I said, you have to take a shot with some of these guys especially when the creative people are on board you need the business side to take a shot on them yeah. and and support and be supportive and like if there are any um, shortcomings or things that they don't know tell them work with them yeah 
um, yeah, you, that is so, our, our industry is a strange industry. It doesn't work like any other industry, really, because it's really chicken and egg, <laughs> and it's constantly huh. chicken and egg. It's well, like, we don't, take you, we don't take you even as an, you know, we won't represent you until you have this, but you can't really have this until you have an agent. You don't, like, everything is, is represented on something else, so... Yeah you've just got to like finagle it and figure it out. It's like, I just have to push through, push, push it through and push it through. And then, and then when the time is right, like I, now I could have that conversation now today and it would be a different conversation. And that was just a year ago. Right. I had that conversation. And now a lot of, and, and I could tell you so many more of these conversations that I've had now, but, it, but what's nice now is that I can either follow up those conversations and see, say, see, now, do you know what I was trying to tell you? Because I don't think I'm being unreasonable. All I want is an even playing field. I'm not, that's, and, and the playing field isn't even. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, um, that's what I want to say. And then in terms of like, I, like you were saying to me um, about this, about um, our subject matter, about how um, you become, uh, how, how to get more diverse, you know, that you just have to keep pushing and, and, and yeah. this calls to you, like you really are passionate about artists, like I was, and you want to work with them you know, you have to push to, to figure out how to work at those companies. And like in Canada, there's a lot of great um, um, agencies there, big ones and small ones. And, and yeah. the people are so nice. Like they're so much nicer. Like, like, oh my God, April, yeah. don't say the normal, regular things that Americans, no. we're no, 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 there, but not nice all the time. How about this compared to here? Yeah, no, compared, <laughs> compared to here, they're not actually trying to kill you and abuse you and like torture yeah. you. No, but but like, you, but I think kill with you, a smile. Remember, you can be yes. like, oh, I wish I could bring you on. I just don't have any room right now. You know, I actually prefer. I don't. Not, I'm not caring anymore. Blah blah blah. You know, you. You're not. I, I don't know. I like it direct because yeah. that that smile that that way it gives so much hope. I because I'm a cynic. I see so many young people going, oh, they said they really liked me. They said they're keeping my picture on file. They're holding on to my, I'm like, they said no, but you're not even <laughs> hearing it. At least here they just go, no. Well, there you is one. But, but the good thing is though now, people do really want diverse talent actors right now. Yes. Like, like it's, it's changed. It's definitely changed. And, um, and people are looking for diversity like nobody's business. So yeah, in Canada, I, I, would, I would still say though, in Canada, we're not the top leads um, still, you know, it's still trying, just trying to get that diversity there, but they're not, they're not starring in, not even the television shows, they're not there yet. Yeah. It's frustrating. But I'm talking about like, if they wanted to come down here, do you know? Um, oh yeah, that they have, yeah. Like if they, you could here. get like a Canadian agent to help you find representation down here. It wouldn't be that it, it's not that that diff, it's not as difficult as it used to be because um uh, uh definitely agencies are looking for that down here yeah and managers well, well as we're almost wrapping up can you believe it can't believe it as we're almost wrapping up that's because it's you wait april and i've been saying we're going to get together for like you know for years and we never have the time we actually have to get together <laughs> yes. but are you purposely, I mean, I'm not a big social media person, but are you guys purposely trying to hide who you are, trying to find information on you, trying to find a website of your agency? Like where? I am not a big social media fan. Yeah, but beyond the, we didn't even get a chance to talk about that because a lot of actors are finding that casting directors are kind of looking at their social media oh, and demanding yeah, that they have. We didn't talk Absolutely. about that part of it. You got it. Well, be careful what you post. Um, understand that everybody is looking at it stuff can come back to bite you in the butt um so so definitely watch what you post of yourself and yeah. and uh, uh and they do like it like if i am on the phone with the casting director and i talk about some, some new person that i signed or whatever they're, they're definitely looking at your instagram or your you know yeah. and, and and as you go along too as you um as you become more established that's the first thing they look at. Yeah, and you know, people don't think about, sometimes you wanna be a little bit more militant, maybe as an actor and you say things and all of a sudden you're on a hit show, that statement you made 10 years before can get you kicked off that show because the network doesn't, doesn't wanna deal with it. Yeah. So you have to be very, but, you, but don't you have a website though, at least for the agency? Yeah, but, nah, nah. I mean, we're so small, like we're very boutique that 
um, for us, we have our handful of people and, and then maybe eventually, maybe eventually, but it, it's, it's, um, you know, if we need to cemetery, we just send it if we, right. you know what I mean? So, so we kind of control the information a little bit. Um, and, you know, I mean, even if you look at CA's website or whatever, there, there's nothing on there. Right. Just their address or whatever. Yeah. So, so, you know, and that's, that's, that goes for, I mean, they'll have like maybe a, some links to like the demo reel or whatever it is, but yeah. it's actually the same information, you know? I love it. April, this has been fantastic. This has been so informative. Um, we've had uh, just an amazing amount of people on here and listening to this. And I know how busy and crazy your time is right now. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Well, good luck, everybody. Um, and keep, keep trying, everyone. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. most important, don't send me <laughs> your resumes and thing to get to April because that's not happening either. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. Bye.